Hi, today I have one more interesting uh, MIPS uh, processor hardware. As you can see here, it is an embedded uh, board. Uh, it can be used for some uh, financial uh, solutions and as well as VoIP and uh, stuff like that. So this thing is also been installed in uh, something like that. I was uh, working on a very interesting project in uh, kernel uh, network stack optimization for this. Uh, board especially so uh, it was uh, quite a long back I was into this uh, project okay so this is quite interesting and uh, uh, this uh, is a TI based MIPS processor so I later uh, let you know its uh, specs so I can do a very quick walkthrough of that uh, you know board itself yeah this is the main uh, processor uh, this is the ti1 and i believe this is the memory uh, you know chip and other stuff so this uh, thing i had in some two three variants and this is one among the variants there is another variant i'm not sure where i kept it so the other variant uh, doesn't have this uh, keypad and the stuff whereas this variant uh, and as well as the other variant you can hook this uh, uh, full size uh, uh, you know this uh, monochrome uh, LCD panel and it has this uh, backlit you can see there so this has this backlit I am not sure about its uh, resolution but it is quite interesting this uh, you know flat cable somewhere it goes over here and then uh, you can uh, do all sorts of things uh, and even you can program uh, uh, in case you want to display any company logo welcome screen and stuff like that besides you want to display any other wipe related uh, you know stuff and uh, things like that okay so it's it's well put together it's a, a board which i have worked for uh, some amount of time and i suppose uh, back of this board has this uh, you know flash uh, uh, you know the storage uh, chip whatever it is so uh, i assume this is the storage for this uh, i mean the you know uh, the flash memory and as well as uh, this might be its ram okay so i need to hook this board i was uh, suddenly uh, you know looking for something and then i remembered i have done something and i can check in this you know sources and before that i thought let me just quickly hook this and then test it out okay so this board uh, is uh, configured uh, uh, in a way that uh, it uh, accepts uh, 5 volts uh, and then it has uh, some ethernet ports and uh, stuff like that i hardly remember uh, you know one among this port is the main lan port so what i can do is i can power this thing and then i can uh, you know quickly put together and uh, we can just do a quick walk through so before shooting this video i have this uh, stuff um, i was doing the same and uh, i thought a long back this is arm or something but you know i'm really not sure because this project something i worked quite a long while and uh, uh, it's a uh, fantastic uh, you know stuff i work for a few months and it's quite amazing so anyway uh, what i can do is i can plug this thing and i i would like to mention that uh, as i shot a few episodes on embedded linux and open wrt and stuff this thing doesn't have i'm not sure this doesn't have open wrt although i'm not fully sure so we can just quickly plug this and then we can explore it so you know few things around the uh, the Linux uh, install okay so and also the kernel uh, whatever it has been uh, put together and uh, we can just walk through okay so let's just quickly power this thing uh, I have this uh, 5 volt supply uh, this thing is for my Xiaomi router which I generally don't use I power that router through this USB port of the laptop okay so I can just hook this and uh, it should come up uh, yeah it doesn't have any status leds or something but you know it's just fine after some time you can hook this uh, uh, you know ethernet port and uh, it should come up okay so what i can do is i can hook this ethernet cable uh, before that let me just grab some you know piece of paper or something so that i'm not touching anything which is conductive or something okay i don't uh, generally do this way uh, but i thought uh, for the sake of video I do something where uh, later in case if I need to work more time I have anyway this standoffs and other stuff so I can properly put it on my desk and then I can work if I need to work for more time. So it is powered up. Uh, what we do is uh, uh, we can just somewhere keep there. My This is my Raspberry Pi. It's on the way. So let me disconnect this so that I can keep this thing away. Okay. Yep. So it's just powered up and what I do is uh, 
Let me hook this Ethernet cable to one of these ports. Yes. And uh, quickly we can try to reach this. So you can see this is the previous uh, terminal and uh, and you can see it's kernel version. So let me open a fresh tab and then we can do a ping 192.168.0.5 something like that. I hope it is powered up. I need to see. Sometimes uh, if you are not sure which is the IP address it gets and other things, uh, you can uh, do some type of a hack, okay, you can anyway, uh, okay, you can anyway check in Wireshark which is the source it is generating any, you know, ARP broadcasts and stuff. So that way also you will come to know. Uh, looks like this is not the port, so let me connect to the other port and we wait for a few seconds. Uh, it is not coming up. Maybe it is expecting this LCD or something. So what I can do quickly is uh, I can disconnect this and uh, connect this LCD. Like I said, uh, this is a very old workflow. I have no idea that what is its initialization and uh, you know specific guidelines. So I can do one thing is I can hook this uh, you know LCD display. Okay, it has this backlit. I'm not uh, connecting that. Uh, it is fine. Uh, I can just hook this way through this uh, flat flex cable and then we can check once again anyway once the lcd is hooked up it is going to show its uh, status anyway the boot uh, status and stuff and we can even enable uh, any debug messages on the lcd and stuff it's quite you know interesting uh, board okay although it has very less ram and uh, stuff compared to modern uh, you know mips uh, embedded boards so this is quite interesting okay yes so I hooked up the same, you can see there, I hooked up this LCD, uh, later uh, I'll show a bit closer, uh, you know, uh, video of, you know, uh, the board. So for now we just quickly get access to the Linux and see how it works inside, okay. So let me reconnect this Ethernet cable and uh, connect this power cable. As you can see, uh, while uh, putting together uh, something uh, I have uh, snapped out and uh, now the L LED it turns up, okay, something in that uh, keypad, uh, you know, connection is snapped up, so I can quickly do a solder and then I can check because, again, I'm saying this board I have taken out after a long time, I need to check something with that uh, kernel stuff, so, which is when I thought, uh, let me, you know, do a quick check, so, uh, you know, before I solder, I still want to check once if... I can able to get this connectivity and I can able to reach this. Well, you can see the issue has been just addressed. I even got my you know, soldering iron and I thought I need to solder that. Luckily, it is just uh, uh, barely held in place and uh, uh, as a proper fix, I need to solder this anyway. So the thing is, it is uh, up and the LED is on over here. Okay. And then uh, I connected uh, the, you know, LAN port. So, so far it just works fine. And I believe the board needs this, uh, you know, daughter board to be connected. And in case if there is any, you know, uh, uh, loose connections or something, it is going to, you know, not function properly. I may do some changes in case if I need to use this for more time, I need to put some kind of a pluggable adapter or something like that. Okay, for now, this is fine. Uh, I may do that sometime later, some type of, a, you know, uh, jumper headers and stuff and I can anyway connect it. So you can see there, I should, I should able to ping that board, uh, you know, this is its IP and uh, we can log in into the same. SSH uh, is not going to work because it is fairly old board. Generally, these era boards, they just work fine with the Telnet, but you know, they don't work with SSH. Okay, so uh, yeah, you can see here it shows as IP phone. Again, this uh, login prompt, anything we can configure and change the things. Yes. So you can see there it is, it has this busy box. A busy box is a very basic uh, version of uh, you know Linux uh, distro, which contains a bare minimum uh, you know user space components and a very basic ported Linux kernel. The main important thing is the kernel should work on such type of boards. And this is what often I say if you are uh, you know going to become a platform level uh, developer or something. Most of the times you will be working on 
you know things like this where you know how you will be working on core operating system or platform level work where you port and do that board bring up and stuff like that so you need to be very good in operating systems and fundamentals of these things and as well as you should be good in terms of you know analyzing the problems and able to port that overall working operating system into the same okay at the same time uh, if the board is a you know low configuration board then you need to strip down all the features of linux kernel standard linux kernel make it small and then you should able to fit in this so we try to run few commands and it is interesting we see how it behaves okay so this is not open wrt i would like to mention once again this is not open wrt uh, of course there are very few commands it's going to work and many it is not going to work you can see clear command it is not working and there is no if config stuff again it is not working uh, i am not sure this ip command also not going to be there so hope they have supported this uh, ping command you can see there it is shown as a part of that busy box not like our uh, regular ubuntu linux or some some kind of a distro okay like that uh, i mean standard desktop distro uh, we can go to proc uh, you can see proc is supported and uh, hope it supports free command otherwise anyway we can print uh, you know cat mem info and you can see there it has uh, uh, total uh, memory is around uh, 32 kb or something it shows as 29 kb maybe something it is uh, uh, you know been uh, shared or something like that i'm not sure and uh, you can see about other statistics okay and also we can uh, have a quick look of its uh, cpu info what i'm worried is if i little move or something i'm worried if it snaps once again it's not going to show this because off camera when i was checking this is what happened okay so that is when i took the soldering and, and luckily it's just working i thought let me continue this video anyway so uh, you can see cat cpu info it shows uh, ti instruments uh, broadband soc it's a very old uh, you know one and the cpu model mips 4k ec version 4.8 and bogo mips of course it shows very less okay so uh, it's just uh, it's a single core processor so it shows the processor id as a zero over here so that's about it and uh, you cannot compare that with a modern uh, uh, hardware something even so basic like raspberry pi or something it's just very bare minimum okay so that's what so it is interesting and if i do you name minus a it shows uh, 2.6 kernel so 2.6 kernel is a very stable kernel even now okay if you check uh, many network routers and um, network equipment especially career grade network equipment uh, you will still find uh, them using this kernel uh, you know may not be the most recent uh, iterations or hardware but you still find 2.6 kernel quite popular uh, you know popularly being used especially uh, equipment which is supposed to work 247 type of situations okay because the kernel have to be well tested mature at least a decade old to use in uh, cg applications you should always understand when uh, the networking companies do any career grade equipment which means you put this equipment in a data center or some type of 247 operation they pick a kernel which is highly stable highly tested and robust kernel bug fixed well maintained kernel uh, rather than any new kernel with lot of new features so that way 2.6 still qualifies and that is the reason this hardware has this uh, you know 2.6 kernel and it has all this uh, other variants so that uh, they will use this to identify what uh, is that uh, version and uh, stuff so it is uh, 2.6.10 and then you have all this you know set of markers to understand what is that you know build is all about so that's what it is and other than that i'm not sure what else this thing has so we go back uh uh yeah otherwise we can go to proc once again and uh, we can check uh, cd net and uh, cd core cd cat route yep you can see it's a route table and uh, uh yeah it is going to show in this format okay so other than that what else i can show i can uh, show the arp table cat arp and it shows all the stuff so currently my pc is up uh, uh and a router and i'm not sure what is this 100 is okay so maybe my phone or something so it has this arp table populated and uh, what else it has it has uh, stats we can have a check cat stat 
yeah uh, cat stat well it is not ls minus l hope a stat is uh, okay stat is a directory of course okay so uh, cd stat okay cat uh, ip contract so this shows uh, the connection tracking and stuff cat uh, r cache again here cat rt cache uh, yeah it is quite interesting so we can also check uh, I'm looking for interface statistics so we see where it is populated so since it is not like desktop uh, I'm kind of confused where uh, I need to search okay cd sys and uh, net yes and uh, yeah you can see their core uh, core and then uh, uh, or else go back and uh, uh, go back and the cat ethernet okay it's a directory ethernet it has nothing and uh, cd uh, core and here you should find the network statistics so cat uh, device weight yellow conf cat native backlog i am not uh, looking for that i am just looking for interface statistics because if it is a regular interface you can find it via if config and commands like that but in this case since it's a special embedded board okay it is we need to directly request a kernel rather than any user space applications so whenever you use uh, if config or such commands it uses uh, io control uh, apis as we know and as i covered in my previous episode so, uh, okay one mistake often uh, many viewers do is uh, go directly to youtube and then try to find uh, the relevant video of linux channel always i suggest to go to the website and uh, search your uh, specific topic you want there is a search button is there go there and uh, you can search for the same okay go here and then uh, you can uh, search over here and then try finding the relevant uh, topic you want to you know learn or something okay so if it is there it is going to display so what we can do is uh, i am not really sure uh, unix uh, i am not really sure which folder uh, it has okay cd ipv4 this has that ipv4 stuff and uh, tcp and uh, stuff like that uh, i am not interested to have a look either this thing actually anyway once we can check this ip forward of course, uh, this may be working as some type of pass through or some type of you know forwarding stuff. So they have enabled the routing uh, by default. And the IP tables, I am not sure it is not going to show. Of course, <laughs> okay. Um, CD dev. Um, yeah, again here it is not showing anything. Net uh, CD net PWD system go back cd net uh, cd core no uh, it does not that because i'm kind of confused if it is a regular desktop see let me open a desktop proc okay cd proc uh, you get this and uh, cd uh, sys core i'm sorry sys net core somewhere here you should able to find the device specific uh, you know things over here am i missing that folder so see for example if you do config all the statistics the kernel puts it in a proc file also so you can get this information via io control also proc file okay i'm just searching for the same so that uh, we can kind of you know track its uh, networking stuff and stuff anyway uh, if not that we can see the other things and we can do a quick walk through okay um, we kind of go back and uh, we see is there anything else which is interesting okay let us see if they have exposed the kernel uh, you know config file okay sometimes they expose it via proc especially these type of embedded uh, devices you will find one conf config.gz or something like that in proc folder so there is no such thing over here I'm not seeing anything like that, so it's not been done that way. Um, cat version, yeah, it shows that, and uh, GCC version 3.4.3, and it has been uh, built around uh, 2008. So, like I said, it's quite you know fairly old. <laughs> okay, this is fairly old, uh, and uh, although the kernel is built at that time, I have not worked at that era. I I was working on this around 2010 or something okay of that time okay so that is not the time which i touched this device okay so 
maybe it's the time where uh, they put this kernel in place okay so something like that i'm not sure mm. what else we explore uh, we can do ls mod and we see uh, any modules are supported so cat modules uh, yeah you can see a few things it shows here it has some kernel module to handle that keypad and this lcd the lcd i have removed uh, to debug why it is not booting anyway uh, i can again put back and it it just kind of shows that display so of course it has some uh, display drivers for this lcd i hope that is the one and i have and uh, they have some couple of more uh, drivers for other you know keypads and stuff the other keypad i just folded down okay over here so hope you can see there uh, i just pushed it down okay so that's that's fine so i get uh, that's what uh, various queries related to system uh, software development i always uh, say that um, you have many branches available some are very much interested in terms of working in kernel part some are interested in uh, uh user space some system component some are interested in uh, device drivers and stuff you need to think which you are comfortable and you can choose the domain and uh, like i mentioned uh, if you are interested to become a device driver developer or something i have covered a video episode on the same you can anyway uh, check uh, this is something recently i'm getting lot of faq so i thought let me quickly discuss in one of this video series okay how to become device driver the linux channel so i uh, discussed in one of the videos i can open in video tab i discussed in one of the videos i have also discussed about um, uh, yeah you can see there and also i have discussed why i don't like to be working in drivers and stuff so there are various things you can learn there uh, i don't recommend anyone after the college uh, do some crash course on device drivers or something and then immediately think about becoming a device driver developer i am not sure how far you do that and then you get successful in terms of getting a, a job because uh, you are still a fresher and uh, many companies don't like to recruit someone in this aspect who works in core embedded who are just out of college they expect at least you have some industry aspect, uh, you know experience and industrial uh, knowledge okay hands on okay i mean to say hands on and then uh, they tend to pick you know guys uh, later they transitioned in those areas so sometimes some companies can do that so it is quite uh, you know makes sense because uh, it's not good uh, you directly jump in with your college uh, you know some basics uh, get into something very core like this you will never catch up and it is it is never going to occur you that uh, how that uh, you know thing have to be approached so this is why many companies hesitate taking any kind of freshers for these type of you know things the best transition is if you want to work in drivers uh, the best transition is you need to get to know let's forget some time about learning c code and stuff that is of course needed so other than that okay other than c programming you need to good at uh, you know systems aspects uh, uh, at least user space systems aspect then you need to be good at linux kernel you need to understand linux kernel then you can think about doing some driver level stuff if it is a linux uh, drivers or if you are working in some other platform or windows or something then it has its own uh, path if you ask me when it is a question of uh, getting into device driver development i suggest uh, have some uh, good hands on with kernel first and then you can think about device driver and stuff so that way i see see this thing uh, you need several uh, people come together they, they, we need uh, platform guys so they are the people who made this uh, linux to work on this okay so we need to credit them uh, second thing is the device driver guys as you have seen okay all this kernel modules some it shows so some must have been compiled as a part of kernel although it doesn't show as a module so you need all this uh, driver guys and apart from that you need also uh technology guys like me i have worked in networking modules and uh, stuff in some aspect so you need sometimes even some amount of technological uh, uh, expertise if it is storage then you need storage experts if it is uh, you know something on uh, networking okay you need networking guys or if you need somebody who is in uh, you know uh, performance evaluation and stuff again you need somebody who is an expert is in expert in that and uh, things like that so you need various things when you think about uh, systems okay it, it depends on that particular uh, thing so 
yeah this is what uh, other than that I, I just want to see is there anything interesting so let's go back to the root folder since it doesn't have any much commands i'm really not sure what to type and stuff okay uh, yeah so host name uh, host name it shows all these things it's been set as ip phone uh, vi is there and uh, said ln yeah few few commands here and there okay mm. Next stat, yeah, it is not there. So that's what I'm kind of limited. I can't do much. You have that ping command and other than that, very few, you know, commands here and there. Busy box, of course, you can do that and, uh, you know, it shows all this stuff. Uh, yeah. So we go to the root and we see is there any other thing is interesting before I wrap up. Okay, so we go once to this dev folder. Uh, yeah, you can see here it shows all these things. It has somewhere this uh, serial uh, header somewhere here. Okay, some from uh, from there you can extend uh, this you know uh, this thing and you can access its uh, serial uh, port access. You can do I mean you can do the serial port access from there and uh, yeah uh, yeah you can see there keypad of zero and stuff. So the de device driver is exposing all this stuff. Uh, you have also this LCD zero and stuff. So you have all that driver uh, this thing LS minus L It will show that the properties LS minus L less hope it works Doesn't work then I can scroll it via mouse. You can see there keypad. It is a character driver LCD. It's also a character driver. Okay, so Yeah, uh, we go out and uh, we can see is there any root folder no there is no root folder df no it is not there uh, cd mnt i am not sure what is in this mount folder nothing is there so yeah cd etc yeah one more interesting thing is we can just uh, you know explore this etc folder you must have seen the open wrt you have that config uh, you know folder and then there are few things over there so in this case it's quite different it doesn't have all that um uh it has all these files i'm not sure what they contain uh in terms of this uh, host dot conf and stuff because see again i, I worked on a specific uh, parts of the kernel i'm i'm I have not even worked on the platform level. I worked in the technological aspect. So I worked in network stack and stuff. So uh, I know that, uh, you know, there are few things which I worked in that time and I'm really not sure who have put together and what they have done afterwards. Okay. So which is why uh, on top, I'm seeing this after a very long time. That's something it happened in 2010 and by now it's around 10 years. Okay. So <laughs> uh, we just see cat FS tab. Is there anything populated? Yep. You can see. Uh, it has all this uh, defaults, so, but uh, again, you can't do this df and other commands like a regular PC, okay? Mm. Yes, cat hosts. Yeah, it has nothing populated. So, yeah, I'm not sure how they have done the configuration and moreover, there are some portions which is, uh, I have signed the NDA and the stuff. This is just still fine. I just uh, checked with my guy and he's still fine. Okay. But other than that, there are some files which I don't want to open deliberately. So that is why I'm hesitant in terms of opening that password and uh, you know, files like that, you can see that password, PPP, it may have some proprietary settings. I just don't want to open them. And even that services and, uh, you know, few of those files, I don't want to tamper. I mean, I don't want to open and show in a public platform. So this is what, but other than that, uh, I'm still uh, good to go. Okay. So this is what, and uh, we just go back and uh, I think we are done. So we go to the user folder, user bin. Uh, yeah, we have this few commands. Uh, since it has at least top, we can type that. Uh, hope it shows some processes and other stuff. Yeah, you can see there it has the SIP server and other stuff. All this, uh, you know, wipe things and also this uh, telnet is there. You can see there telnet daemon is there. And uh, yeah, it's nice. It shows at least it has this, uh, you know, uh, this thing and uh, a few other stuff. So let me come out. And let us see, is there anything it is interesting? So we have that renice as well, wget command and stuff. I can even do some true bench on this as well because uh, 
uh, if I compile, uh, cross compile this uh, true bench on MIPS or something like that, anyway I can run on this board. Uh, it has this uh, wget uh, and it is anyway going to support that, okay. So ping um, the toffee project dot org. Hope it resolves this uh, DNS. Uh, are you root? It asks. Okay. Uh, sudo. No, no, no. There's no sudo business here. So, uh, I'm not sure. So, root sudo so. No, it's not going to work. Uh, there, there may be some workaround or something. I'm, I'm really not sure. Sometime I need to check. But if not that anyway, I can do a duplicate to my, through my PC and I can just, you know, do these things. So, it's a fun, uh, little small package it's just uh, it, you know it's a kind of nostalgia I, again i thought uh, i need to check something on mips thing what i did uh, i need to check in this board which is why i just uh, took it out of my closet uh, and uh, good that it is working first i tested whether it is working or not and then i thought uh, let me just share it in a video and uh, like i say these are uh, you know some people complain that um, the videos are long and stuff see i don't want to stick with any specific time format or something i want to be comfortable it's almost like uh, when uh, the students uh, comes to my home they spend some time they relax and then we discuss various things and apart from you know teaching sessions and stuff so i want to do something like that i don't want to rush things and shoot some two minute quick hacks and stuff if you are looking for that this is not the right channel for you so the idea is uh, sometimes i want to share my uh, workflow even uh, a couple of guys have even requested me time to time you can also do some kind of lifestyle uh, channel and stuff so this is you know i feel uh, this is still a part of my life till if not uh, going to some restaurant and eating this food and that food <laughs> okay i don't want to put in the next channel but other than that this is still is part of my workflow uh, whenever i sign any nda very strict nda contracts uh, i mean nda uh, agreement or something such contracts i do highly honor and this is also the reason i don't always mention uh, which client i have worked and uh, things like that so sometimes uh, the end uh, vendor may be somebody else but it has been given to a specific client to work on these components uh, uh, an intermediate uh, you know uh, technology partner and stuff so through that i may get uh, some work on that and uh, you know or else i may do some technology and uh, they may even incorporate mine so anything is possible that way you know you need to respect that nda contracts always so even as a full-time employee whenever you sign uh, uh, you know your ag appointment letter you are also agreeing that you are not going to tell let away some of the trade secrets and stuff so you need to always honor that and uh, before you share anything uh, in a public platform or else even you put on your resume sometimes you check is it required or not because you just agreed not to share certain uh, business you know secrets and stuff so which is why i'm not showing there are some more exciting things i could have shown uh, you know things in this lcd and stuff but unfortunately i can't do that because uh, i still want to honor my nda agreement what i did but i thought uh, there are few things it is quite fine you know something about the cpu and uh, memory and stuff so this gives that to preview that uh, how you can customize if you want a very stripped down version of uh, linux kernel still uh, it fits onto some kind of hardware like this consider 2.6 don't pick uh, a full fleshed uh, you no know, modern kernel something like you no know, 2.6 you can take it as a bare uh, you know stable kernel in that you can pick uh, which is uh, the long term uh, supported lts version and then you can uh, start porting that onto that you know board or something okay you can always find in kernel dot org you go there some of them are mentioned as lts just like we have this ubuntu lts so let's go to this kernel dot org Yes, you can see there long term, long term, long term and uh, they will put certain hints saying that it's been, uh, you know, uh, put as a long term uh, version. So pick something, uh, you know, it is constantly being uh, maintained and supported, uh, you know, bug fixed and uh, things like that. So pick something as your reference kernel and then you can start porting to the same in case if you are doing that uh, board bring up or something like that okay this is going to make your job easier and if you have some uh, you know device or uh, this thing which lacks that you know specs 
then try to choose your well trusted 2.x uh, 2.6 kernel uh, 2.6.x kernel than any sort of modern uh, you know kernel spin off okay so it's just it's uh, a small suggestion from my end it may work may not work okay it's up to you so before i wrap up uh, this is the board uh, i can do a quick uh, zoom in so that you can have a look so let me just position towards the camera and uh, focus so that you can have a quick look yeah you can see there this uh, ti processor and uh, yes let me just bring towards the camera yeah you can see that this is the ti processor mips processor and other than that looks like this might be you know this might be you know it's a memory or something and uh, this maybe it's a firmware or something so let me just get a closer look yeah this uh, might be it's a firmware or something okay uh, i mean to say the you know flash uh, chip okay flash storage okay so i am not uh, you know much expert in this uh, maybe this may be it's uh, you know flash and this may be the ram or uh, since it is next to the processor this may be the ram and that may be the storage so anything could be possible but hope uh, this you know gives that picture okay so this is the other board which i was mentioning and i have another version which doesn't have this and it has few more things changed and uh, since uh, you know uh, i feel that time i have bricked or something i am really not sure where i kept okay so i don't want to pull it out and waste my time since i have anyway one reference board which you know works fine something like this so hope you guys loved this video if you want more videos like this uh, you know i have still more uh, you know devices left but i am kind of feeling lazy whether to take or not so if you like episodes like this please hit the like button and uh, if you have anything to discuss uh, be in touch via you know email or post your queries in youtube comments thanks a lot for joining me stay tuned have a nice day bye bye